Hey, what's up guys? Chris Jr. here for Chris Core Productions. Winter is coming. But before that, brace yourselves because Halloween is coming. And with it, a whole load of unhealthy snack options, an excuse for some girls to wear some pretty inappropriate outfits. But that's not what we're focusing on today. Today and in the following weeks, we're gonna look at all the ways that you can scare your friends with some creepy visual effects. Today, we look at how to create some paranormal activity and even an evil spirit. Now if you saw last week's video, you saw some of these objects in this very attic move around on their own. And some of you guys guessed that I use strings, which is a very good guess and definitely an option that you can use to move things around. But um, actually that's not what I did. I used my very own hands and that is because I wanted to give a more controlled movement to the objects instead of just giving it a tugging motion. Now it's a very subtle difference and you might not even notice it, but uh, for example, when you see this horse rock back and forth and then come to a complete stop, you wouldn't be able to achieve this with just tugging it with strings because it would rock back and forth until it would come to a stop. So stopping objects like that abruptly it gives more of the idea that there's something, some presence controlling them instead of something just knocking them around. The subtle difference might not even make a difference, but um, that is my reasoning. So let's take a look at how to do this. What I did is I placed my hand behind the object. And this is very important because if you place your hand in front of the object and move it around, when you're masking it, you're gonna have some issues and you might leave the tip of your fingers on the object. So it's very important that however way you're grabbing this object to move it, you are behind it. That's what I did with the rocking horse and that's also what I did with the chair. Then all you have to do is grab a clean plate, mask the object, and that's pretty much it. Next up, I wanna show you guys how to create a convincing ghost effect. And just like the paranormal activity effect, most of this effect will be done in camera. And we're only using After Effects to just add the final touches. So let's take a look at some of the settings to change in your camera. So the only thing we need to adjust is the shutter speed. Now if you're trying to match the exposure in the field of another shot, then you might have to change a few more things. First things first, to achieve a blurry movement for your ghost, I set my shutter speed to 10. I can do this because my camera is mirrorless. However, if you're shooting with most other cameras, such as a DSLR, and if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you might only be able to go down to 30. So let's say I wanna match the shot with my other shot of a guy walking around. I will do this with my ISO only, since changing my aperture would affect my depth of field, making the shot not match with my other one. If depth of field sounds confusing, I'll post a link in the description that explains what it is and how you can control it. Getting the shot to match perfectly isn't essential since we can color correct the shots to match later, but it's important to get them as close as possible. Now that we've adjusted our camera settings, it's time to move in a creepy way. Also, notice the difference in creepiness with just the change that we made in shutter speed. Now let's take this footage into After Effects and let's do the rest. So we're gonna start by splitting the videos of the ghost and of the reaction to the ghost. And we can do this by creating a simple mask that divides the scene in two and then just feathering out just a little bit. And now it's time for the ghost. All you have to do is line up the footage so that the action of the ghost matches with the reaction of your character. And then once that is done, all you have to do is lower the transparency of the clip of your ghost and you're done. Now, like I said before, it's important to also color correct the shots so that they match with each other. That is very simple. You can just adjust the brightness and get them to match that way. All right guys, that is it for this tutorial. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and a comment. And if you do make a video following these techniques, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below or send it over to me. I'll gladly check it out. And then one more thing that I wanna mention, if you like my page on Facebook and if you share this video by tagging my page, then I'm gonna feature everybody that does so in my next tutorial, which is gonna be a big one. If this is your first time on my channel, I'd love to have you back. So if you enjoy these kind of videos, go ahead and subscribe. I make two videos a week and soon I'll be making three videos a week because there's gonna be a bunch of new content coming out uh, such as shorts and all kinds of weird, creepy horror stuff for October. And then we're gonna move into some Star Wars stuff, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, really excited for everything that's coming up. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Car Productions. I'll see you next time.